Sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. First, spoiler alert. If you're the type of person who avoids watching Marvel movie trailers or stays off social media when a new Mandalorian episode drops and wants to watch Apple Keynotes rumor-free, then click onto an older Vector video or go watch what Mr. Mobile or Android Central are up to. That'll leave you full of surprise and delight all safe until June. But if you want my take for what these latest iOS 14 leaks mean for the future of iPhone and iPad, then, as Chuck D said, sit back and slap your Mac. I'm Rene Riggi and this is Vector. So here's what seems to have happened. An internal build of iOS 14, which previous reports have pegged as Azul, the Spanish or Portuguese word for blue, got leaked. Now, this has happened before. Sometimes they were builds accidentally left and found on a public web server. Sometimes someone didn't get what they want or were upset with someone in their reporting chain, so they had a little tantrum and leaked it. And sometimes someone just wants to watch the world burn and, you know, take their team's work with it. Regardless, these aren't betas. Those typically come on keynote day in June. These are internal development builds and are made for internal developer-fused hardware and require an internal restore process to run. So when these builds do leak, you need someone who not only understands code, but code diving and reverse engineering to go through the binary and see what clues can be found in text, icons, class names, and more. That's basically what has just happened with iOS 14. And so we've seen an avalanche of blog posts describing what the more tech savvy bloggers have found. Now, it's also important to remember that depending on how old this particular build is, some of the features they found might have been deferred and some might not have been added yet. As I've said before, there's many a slip twixt a list and a ship. So if come June keynote, what we get is different than what was leaked, don't blame Apple. You chose to read the early draft script and that's never the same as the final film. When the Apple Watch launched, it didn't have springboard like the iPhone, but a new icon grid called Carousel. The way it moved and the lack of labels made it hard to use for some people though. So Apple added the ability to toggle it into a list view of apps. iOS 14 looks like it'll be doing the same thing for the iPhone springboard, but with significantly more options like the ability to sort by name or unread notifications, or even Siri suggestions based on time, location, and previous activity patterns. Wallpapers are also getting better organized, so you can browse by category and not just type. There'll also be support for wallpaper apps. That would let developers offer or even sell packs of wallpapers on the App Store. That, once downloaded, would be integrated right into the wallpaper settings proper, making them easier to keep track of, browse, and use, kind of like how the iMessage sticker store works today. Messages could be getting at shouts, you know, like on Twitter or Slack when you put an ad symbol in front of someone's handle to get their attention, which would be super useful in group messages. Also, message retraction. So if you accidentally send the wrong thing to the absolute wrong person, you can hopefully pull it back before they see it or remove it so they can't show anyone else. All your shame private. Hopefully this and all the older features like sent with lasers would finally then be catalyzed over to the Mac app as well. And hope beyond hope, screen sharing would be brought back from the Mac in exchange. This one is also a big one for many, real pointer support for the iPad. In other words, the ability to plug in a mouse or trackpad and use them like you would on a Mac. In iPadOS 13, Apple's accessibility team added pointer support, but it was literally that, an accessibility feature that expanded on assistive touch to help people who found it difficult or impossible to use multi-touch. And this isn't that. This is from the main OS team, and it's designed to make mouse and trackpad first-class navigational citizens with visible and hidden states, arrow and finger modes, the whole bit. Now, some people will say the iPad isn't meant to be a MacBook and shouldn't have this type of support. They're a little much. Steve Jobs didn't want arrow keys on the original Mac because he wanted people to be forced to learn how to use the mouse. Look down at any modern Mac keyboard though, and what do you see? Arrow keys, because after a little time and a little getting used to, of course they come back. If you use your iPad as a multi-touch tablet and only as a multi-touch tablet, then you just don't care about this, you don't. Let the traditional computer nerds be happy with their pointers. They won't get in your way. But if you do dock your iPad into a keyboard, then you deserve to have a full keyboard docked experience, especially with the also rumored new smart keyboard that'll include an integrated trackpad. 
I all caps love the Apple Pencil, but having to switch from pencil to keyboard, field to field is just cumbersome, which is why I'm so completely into this one. The ability to use the Apple Pencil to write any text anywhere. And just like Apple's old Newton message pad, the text would just turn into type where and as appropriate. Literally can't wait for this one. Home fitness is getting smarter and not just in tracking, in presentation. Companies like Peloton have essentially strapped iPads to cycles and treadmills and offered up workout classes for you right in your own home. So not surprisingly, Apple is working on its own version. It sounds like it's primarily geared towards tvOS and the Apple TV, but it'd be great on the iPad, even the iPhone as well. An Apple workout comes up on the screen, Apple Music plays, and your Apple Watch handles all the tracking. It's exactly the kind of integrated, differentiated, only Apple product that Tim Cook and Jeff Williams love announcing, especially given the investment the company has made into not just the health technology, but their health talent. It's also not hard to imagine an Apple Workouts Plus subscription service joining TV Plus, Arcade, Music, and very much hopefully an Apple Prime bundle at some point as well especially right now when damn near everything public is being canceled and damn near everyone is being told to stay at home. Guided workouts is one of the few features that could really boom during all this bust. Apple is so right out in front when it comes to accessibility with full support day and date for new products and always expanding support for existing products. So no surprise, it looks like there'll be even more of that in iOS 14. One is an assistive listening feature that will detect important sounds like sirens, alarms, screams, cries, knocks, bells, and just translate them into haptic feedback. In other words, touch-based signals, which is amazing. Also, air gesture recognition for people who need to basically sign to their devices, and the ability to better tune AirPods and EarPod audio to better suit different types of low hearing needs. Now, Night Shift is a feature that's been on iPhones and iPads and even Macs for a while now. It shifts the color temperature from cooler blues during the day to warmer yellows at night, like going from fluorescent to tungsten lights. Some HomeKit lights and apps have offered similar features for their own hardware and in their own apps, but iOS 14 wants to tie it all together and make it easier, even effortless to manage from the main home app. Now, if only they could tie into all their iPhone and iPad camera systems and offer true tone based ambient color temperature matching as well. That way every indoor light would just look white all the time, not blue, not yellow, but paper white. Also, some form of facial recognition for HomeKit secure video. It's not face ID because the cameras don't have depth sensors to read geometry or secure elements to store it, at least not yet. So it's probably image based recognition only. So you could fool it with like a sibling or a parent mask, but that's not the point. It wouldn't be designed to protect secrets, just to enable features based on who's in its line of sight, based on any given time. And with Apple's lockdown on device security policies. So you don't have to worry about Google or Facebook or Amazon using your risky business reenactment to train their machine learning. Also, and I've been waiting for this for a long time, the ability to set external features permanently rather than just opportunistically, which basically means you could tell your Apple TV to always use your home pods, like so many of us have been asking for since launch. And then of course, we just need better multi-device mesh Siri so we can get closer to full on Jarvis, Friday, Edith, which is exactly what I want, especially after watching it all unfold again in Dave Wiskus' new film, all about all the AI and voice enabled sunglasses worn by Tony Stark in all the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And he was able to make it because of Nebula, the video platform built by and for independent creators like Legal Eagle, Tierzu, Low Spec Gamer, Wendover, Sarah Z, 12 Tone, and yours truly. We're building Nebula because we want a place where creators can try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube, like Edith. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series, like Trek Nation, from the son of the creator of Star Trek that explores his famous father's creation and the popularization of concepts like ambient computing. By signing up, for just $19.99 a year, a year, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create the content you really want us to create. Go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series. And now Nebula as well. And to the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream and thanks to all of you for supporting the show.
There have been other iOS 14 rumors as well, like the ability to finally set default apps. What I really want though is just a rock solid release. Just give me that, even if the other features don't all come at launch, but come as a steadier, more sustainable rate throughout the rest of the year. But now, what I really wanna know is what you want. Hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you wanna see from iOS 14? Thanks for watching, see you next video.